Welcome to our full review of the GD10 Pro Game Stick. This emulation console promises to bring a vast library of classic games to your TV. Today we're going to analyze its performance from 8-bit games to PSP emulation. Is it worth the investment? Find out in this in-depth video. We'll explore its capabilities, limitations, and how it compares to other similar devices. If you're a fan of retro games, this is a must-see video. Let's start our analysis. And for those who are interested, I'll leave its link in the description of this video, where there are three versions available in prices ranging from $18 to $30. When you open the box, you'll find the main console, two wireless controllers, an HDMI cable, a user manual, a user manual, a USB power supply, and a pre-installed micro SD card. The console itself is remarkably compact and lightweight, designed for direct connection to the TV's HDMI port. Its minimalist design is reminiscent of a slightly larger USB stick, with a predominantly plastic but apparently robust construction. The wireless controls have a familiar layout, evoking classic designs and offer satisfactory tactile response. The HDMI cable is of standard length, providing flexibility and connection, while the USB source is compact and versatile. The user manual is concise but informative, and the pre-installed micro SD card adds immediate convenience. This composition of items reflects a well-designed product, balancing portability and functionality, allowing the user to start playing right after unpacking. After examining the contents of the box and our first impressions of the GD10 Pro, let's now delve into the technical specifications that drive this compact device. At its heart is the AM Logic S905M quad-core processor. This chip is known for its balanced performance and energy efficiency, crucial characteristics for an emulation device. The processor works in conjunction with 2GB of DDR3 RAM, a modest amount, but generally sufficient for most classic system emulators. As for storage, it uses a micro SD card based system. The device usually comes with a pre installed card, which can vary between 64 and 256GB, depending on the version purchased. This configuration allows for easy expansion or replacement of the storage, offering flexibility to users who want to add more games or upgrade the system. The operating system that manages all this hardware is Emulec version 4.3. This is a Linux distribution specializing in emulation, optimized for devices like this. Emulec offers a user-friendly interface and support for a wide range of emulators, making it easy to access and organize games. These technical specifications are fundamental to understanding the GD10 Pro's performance, especially considering the variety of systems it is designed to emulate, from 8-bit consoles to more advanced systems like the PSP, which we mentioned earlier. Having analyzed its technical specifications, let's now explore its connectivity in the installation process. It connects directly to the TV via its integrated HDMI output. Simply insert the device into an available HDMI port on your television. For power, use the USB source provided, connecting it to a USB port on the TV or to a plug adapter. It's a good idea to use the external power supply in case your TV can't deliver the necessary watts. The console has two additional USB ports. These are useful for connecting wired controllers, if you prefer, or for adding extra storage via a USB stick. You can also use these ports to connect other compatible peripherals, such as keyboards or mice. To turn it on, just plug it into the HDMI port and wait for the magic to happen, then the operating system will start automatically and basic settings will appear, such as language and time zone. After that, synchronize the wireless controllers following the instructions in the manual that we usually ignore. The system usually comes pre-configured with a selection of games, so you can start playing almost immediately after the initial setup. This ease of connection and configuration is one of the GD10 Pro's strengths, allowing even less experienced users to quickly enjoy the device. Now, 
Let's explore the user interface and how to navigate the game's library. After the initial setup, we are greeted by the user interface, which is intuitive and easy to navigate. The main menu features icons for different game systems, settings, and tools. Navigation is often fluid, allowing quick access to the various emulated platforms. Games and emulators are organized by system, making it easy to find specific titles. This system offers customization options such as visual themes, audio and video settings, and performance adjustments for each emulator. The pre-installed games library is extensive, with thousands of titles covering many classic platforms. GD10 Pro supports a wide range of systems, from the NES to even more recent systems like the PSP. The exact number of games can vary depending on the version of the device, but it generally offers a comprehensive selection for each platform. Adding new games is a relatively simple process. You can transfer ROMs to the micro SD card using a computer or download them directly via the GD10 Pro interface if connected to the internet. The system automatically recognizes newly added games, categorizing them into the appropriate platform. This combination of a user-friendly interface, a vast pre-installed library, and the ease of expanding the game collection contributes significantly to the user experience with this game stick. So now let's move on to its performance. Having explored its interface and game library, let's now take a look at its emulation performance and gameplay experience. In the emulation tests, the GD10 Pro showed varying results depending on the console and the complexity of the games. For older systems such as the NES, SESES, and Mega Drive, performance was excellent on practically all the titles tested, offering a fluid experience with no noticeable problems. Moving on to systems such as PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64, as well as Dreamcast, we noticed some differences. Lighter games ran satisfactorily, but more demanding titles showed variable performance, with occasional framerate drops. In the case of the PlayStation 1, you usually won't have so many problems. The special focus on PSP emulation revealed the limitations of the hardware. Simpler PSP games performed well with smooth gameplay. However, heavier or more complex titles showed suboptimal performance with possible crashes. This variation in performance was to be expected, considering the specifications of the GD10 Pro compared to the original PSP hardware. As for the controls and gameplay, it comes with wireless controllers that proved adequate in terms of comfort and a familiar layout. The overall experience of using the controls was considered satisfactory, with a low learning curve. The console is compatible with additional USB controllers which increases the options for users. However, there is no support for Bluetooth controllers. This compatibility with USB controllers is a positive point, allowing gamers to use their preferred controllers if they wish. The overall gaming experience on this game stick is quite positive, especially for titles from older consoles. The combination of efficient emulation for classic systems and responsive controls makes for a nostalgic and enjoyable experience. Of course, bear in mind that the limit here is lighter PSP games, so God of War, for example, will run, but slowly. Not to mention PS2 games that are here for PSP and the performance suffers. Having said all that, let's get down to the pros and cons. After analyzing the performance and playability of the GD10 Pro, it's important to evaluate its strengths and limitations. Among the positive aspects, the portability and ease of use stand out, allowing quick connection to any TV with HDMI. The vast library of pre-installed games, covering several classic systems, is a big draw. Just one point here, as there are several repetitions of the same game, but in different languages. The emulation performance of older consoles such as the NES, NES, SES, and Mega Drive is excellent, complemented by an intuitive user interface. In addition, PlayStation 1 works well, as do simple PSP games. The device offers good value for money, considering the number of games included, and allows for easy expansion of the library. 
the included wireless controls have a familiar and comfortable layout. On the other hand, the GD10 Pro has some limitations. Performance is inconsistent when emulating more advanced systems, especially PSP. The build quality of the controls could be more robust, and there is a lack of support for Bluetooth controls. Some users have reported heating problems during prolonged sessions. Hardware limitations prevent perfect emulation of more recent systems, and the quality of pre-installed games can vary, with possible problems with some ROMs. In addition, there are legal issues related to pre-installed games that deserve consideration but everyone already knows that, so let it go. It's crucial to weigh up these pros and cons when considering whether the device meets each user's specific expectations and needs. When comparing the GD10 Pro with other retro consoles on the market, we can see some important differences. Compared to similar devices such as the Y6 or GD20, the GD10 Pro stands out for its portability and ease of use, making it ideal for those looking for a plug-and-play solution for TVs. In terms of performance, it offers a solid experience for consoles up to the PlayStation 1 and Nintendo 64 era, as well as some PSP games. Not bad here. In terms of value for money, it generally positions itself as an affordable option, especially considering the number of pre-installed games and the ease of use. However, more demanding users may prefer to invest a little more in devices with more powerful hardware. Now on to the tips and tricks for optimizing its performance. The first thing is to check the firmware update if compatible. Updates can bring performance improvements and bug fixes. For more demanding games, try reducing the output resolution to HD instead of full HD or 4K. This can significantly improve performance. Also, for games that are running slowly, enable frame skipping in the emulator settings. This may sacrifice some of the visual smoothness, but it improves the speed of the game. Some models allow slight overclocking. Use this function with caution, as it can cause instability or overheating. This would be an extreme case, so be careful. For heavier games, use safe states frequently to avoid losing progress in the event of crashes. Crashes can occur with emulators in specific games, so it's worth saving more often. By implementing these tips, you can significantly optimize its performance. So let's get to the considerations. This game stick offers a compact and affordable solution for emulating retro games. Its main features include easy installation, a vast library of games and good performance on older systems. It is best suited to casual retro gaming enthusiasts and those looking for a plug-and-play solution. However, gamers looking for perfect emulation of more recent systems may want to consider more powerful alternatives. So you'll need to evaluate your favorite emulator to decide. Thank you for watching this review. If you like the content, leave a like and comment on your experiences or questions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more reviews of technology and gaming products and see you next time.